you remember, I don't know, about two weeks ago when I built the go-kart for my kid? Well, little did I know that go-kart would set in motion a series of events that have brought us here today to this broken brake lever. Long story short, my boy is now the evil Knievel of mini dirt bikes. I'll fill you in in a moment, but for now I'd like to fix this lever. Not that it matters since at this rate, tomorrow probably he'll be test piloting experimental aircraft. Yes, I know you can buy these for 10 or 15 or 20 bucks. I'm not sure I haven't looked and it's been quite a few years since I've shopped for one. But he'd like to get out in the dirt this afternoon. I've got the tools and it's a quick fix, so here we are. Now, he didn't break this. I got him a used bike and it came this way. I'm not even sure it's actually broken. The previous owner may have gotten all fancy teacup pinky finger and decided to cut it. But whatever the case, I want my kid's whole hand on there should he choose to ride that way. If or when he starts throttle bumping and rock hopping, he can shorten it himself. The boy's gotten pretty good at that, cutting stuff in half. Now that I'm looking at it closely, that's broken. And it looks like it took maybe a bit of a bend. Some of the plating is crackled off the back. Whatever the case, I think I'd like to add about an inch to the end of this. Probably straighten it out, add a bit of a ball end. Maybe something like that if all goes well. I'm sure you saw that. I fouled the electrode trying to get that tack in there around the clamps that were holding these parts in place, but I managed to get it. What I was trying to do is bridge that large gap, so now I have something I can weld down into. This weld and this extension will be ground just to get to the shape that I want. So the welds really have to be 100%. Anything superficial will end up just being ground off and the thing will fall apart again. After ensuring that I'd weld it all the way through, I came back and I filled it trying to get at or above the original surface. I don't think I see any low spots, but I'm sure they'll pop up once we start grinding this out. It's always better to lay more material on there and then take it away than it is to fire the welder back up to fill any small holes. The other thing you wanna look out for when doing these kind of repairs, or I guess buildups, is to not undercut your original part. Like if you start to lose one of these sharp edges, you can spend a lot of energy chasing your tail, trying to fill that and it runs away from you. Once you get below this original surface, you have a lot more grinding and sanding to do afterwards. But from here, so far it looks okay. I'm gonna rough this out over the... I think that's all the attention it's getting from me. The ball in there isn't perfect, but I don't think he should cut his hand on it. I did clip it just a little bit with the belt grinder across the flat of the two inch belt. It's tearing me up inside. This is a trial bike. Technically a mini trial, as it's for kids. Not to be confused with a trail bike, which is something completely different and has pedals, which consequently I'm allergic to. But first, I know what you're thinking, because my wife asked me the same thing. What kind of idiot gets a six-year-old kid a motorcycle? Well, I'm gonna exercise my right against self-incrimination. Instead of answering that question, let me explain how we got here. I've got a bit of trials history myself, and from before my kid was born, secretly, I hoped he'd love this too. I should mention that in my visions, however, he was like 16 or something, not necessarily six. 
But anyway, just like all dads perhaps, I entertained sharing the things I liked doing with my children. My boy would ride trials, and my girl would be really good at butterfly knives. Let me give you the Reader's Digest version of this story. I'll just start off by saying my boy got real comfortable with the go-kart. That sort of torture was not in the requirements document when I designed this thing. He started shearing the drive axle key, popping chains, bending sprockets, you name it. This cart was never meant to go backwards. So basically when he'd flip it 180, the engine is still going forward and his weight and momentum are going backwards. Conflicts like that usually resolve themselves rather quickly. Things break. This started to spend a lot of time on the bench. Around about that time, a friend of the family upped the ante and my boy got a taste of his first four-wheeler, ATVs, and he took to that that surprisingly fast. <laughs> the go kart was now second fiddle. He asked for one, for a four-wheeler, naturally, but we had to tell him he was too young because, well, he was too young. Surprisingly, though, he never really asked again. I mean, anytime we'd happen across one or by a dealership, he'd always ask to have a closer look or sit on them, smile from ear to ear, but never throw a tantrum and insist he had one. That was the kind of psychological warfare I was not prepared for from a five-year-old. So this year, with the weather getting nice, I started to really think about his request. I'm a sucker, what can I say? I started window shopping and I didn't immediately find one of the size I wanted. Not at what I thought was a reasonable price anyway. In that though, I did come across a rash of really cheap pit bikes you may have noticed everywhere. Two to three hundred dollar dirt bikes for five year olds. I started doing more homework, was surprised to learn that in the hands of sub 10 year olds, two wheeled vehicles are statistically safer than their four wheeled counterparts. And that's when the lights came on. What are the odds they make trial bikes small enough for kids? Turns out they do, and they're not easy to find. Lots of driving and a ton of phone calls netted me this 50cc bike. It looks like it's done a lot more street riding than trial biking. Tires are absolutely cooked. They were overinflated, almost as hard as a rock. I mean, these are supposed to be really soft knobbies. Not pencil eraser soft, but pretty soft. I'm guessing the kid who had this before did a lot of trying to keep up with his motocross friends. It does have a squeak somewhere in the rear suspension, maybe the swing arm. That's next on my list. I'm hoping it's something cheap like a plastic bushing. Trial bikes don't go as fast as their dirt bike cousins. Motocross, enduro, that kind of stuff. They're not meant to. Check out the size of the sprocket on the back. That's like an 11 inch sprocket on a 14 inch tire. Again, they're meant to go very slowly. I mean, they can go fast, but they're meant for slow climbing to get up over or around obstacles. Lots of low end power. In official trials, you can't put your foot down or you get a point for every time you put your foot down. These things are basically the adult version of the floor is lava and you're meant to ride these standing. There's no real seat to speak of, which in this case works out for me. Got a bike that's meant to go slow with enough power for him to grow into if he likes it. He can ride this sitting down for now and his feet still touch the ground. As of today, he's only been on this thing a total of maybe three hours tops. He picked it up after his first lesson and he's just now starting to ride standing. I'm telling you though, that first day was nerve wracking for me. I was completely resigned to one of those funniest home movies where he rockets himself off into the sticks, but he's exercising a lot more control than I expected. Yeah, I realize this might be a bit of a letdown. I don't have a video of it. 